Welcome back. Thank you very much for staying with us here on Joy News on Multi TV. It's time now for JN Interactive. Mm. Marion Thierry. Hey, is here. how are you? I am doing so Today, great. Today, what is purple on check? <laughs> hey. Well, check, so, check so, does look good on you, so I think you should maintain that. Well, the check it once rather than check, saying what. Check, check, check. <laughs> Boys are red. <laughs> anyway, tell us what's, what's coming um, up today. You remember uh, POTAG went on strike. Exactly. And now UTAG says they're joining. No. Oh. Yep. The train. It's, <laughs> it's, it keeps it's becoming building up. something else. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think any government uh, would like this kind of thing that mm. they come into power. And it seems like agitation, it's labor weird. agitation yeah. is everywhere. Everybody's crying. I, I don't know how uh, the current government is feeling. And it's obvious it's gotten people talking. What it are they saying? It has people talking. Yes, and so we're talking about it. And uh, yesterday's March. After we watched uh, Brazil and Germany, this one was so lackluster <laughs> that I could yawn. But hey, Argentina went through. Yeah, so we're talking did. about that as well. All right, Marian, let's hear you. <laughs> Welcome to your most interactive half hour on TV. My name, as always, is Marian Toure. <laughs> So welcome to your show. I'd like to announce all the social media tools that you need to join this conversation online. You find us on Facebook.com slash join news on TV. Like our page, comment on all the posts we put there would amplify what you're sharing with us with the rest of the world. We are on Twitter. We tweet at join news on TV at JN Interactive GH and at MN Toure. Three Twitter handles ready to retweet your thoughts and share what you're sharing here on the show. Join us, I am at multitvworld.com. That's our email address, and our WhatsApp number is 0540109009. And JN Interactive is where tech meets news to set the agenda. So it's been over a month since the Pot uh, Polytechnic Teachers Association of Ghana, POTAG, went on strike over unpaid research and book allowances. As a result, the polytechnics have been shut down and the students are at home just awaiting the resolution of the situation. And the Ministry of Education appears unperturbed about this strike action that has been taken by POTAG. And even before this issue is resolved, we have hints of a possible strike by the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAC. And we can also confirm that the Teachers and Educational Workers Union, TEWU, of the College of Health Sciences, University of Ghana, is actually on strike. We'll try to get our fingers around these issues today, but it appears strikes have become the order of the day. Today on GN Interactive, we are asking, should strikes be the best way? to resolve issues with employment. Join the conversation by tweeting, by WhatsApping, or joining us on our Facebook page with your comments. But on the phone lines at this particular moment is Dr. Samuel of Fori Bequin. He is the national president of UTAG, and he actually joins us to give us some clarity on the issue. Good evening, Doc, and welcome to JN Interactive. Good evening, thank you. How are you doing? I'm fine, and you? Fabulous. Uh, please educate us. Why are you embarking on your strike? Well, uh, this issue started as far back as uh, last year, that's 2013, mm -hmm. December. Um, the whole thing came up when the finance minister went to parliament somewhere, I think, in November, uh, to present the budget statement for the 2014 academic year. Mm -hmm. Uh, in that statement, uh, he said that the book government is going to replace the book and research allowances with the uh, National Research Fund. Right. And um, that's, this was done without recourse to us because nobody informed us what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, it just hit us. So when we heard that, we quickly uh, made consultation with the National Council for Tertiary Education, that's NCT. Mm -hmm. They tried explaining the reason behind that, but we told them that they missed the point. So, uh, the two things are not for the same thing. The book and research allowances are what uh, we need to be uh, able to prepare and go and teach. Whereas the National Research Fund is meant for uh, cutting edge researches, uh, uh, applied research to get solutions to problems that confront us. So, uh, they cannot miss the two and mm. do that. Mm. Subsequently, uh, the matter went before the National Labor Commission. That was in March when mm. we threatened that if the issue is not resolved, we are going to embark on a 
strikers. So the Labour Commission came in and then directed that we should go and, and negotiate. But before then, we did all this rule that all well, they put it like they said, mm -hmm. that it was wrong for the government to unilaterally decide to buy a commission of service of staff about uh, due process. And due process here means bringing the issue to the negotiation table for us to negotiate. Right. Because the book and research allowances were negotiated for in the first place. Mm. Uh, however, they as employers, uh, they can also uh, uh, bring in new ideas. But these new ideas can only be accepted when it is negotiated for. Mm. So they ask the government to bring the issue to the negotiation table. Mm. So when we went, uh, we told them that fine, we are ready to negotiate. But then uh, for the 2000 2013-2014 academic year, mm -hmm. at that point, which was almost ending, because when it was then in April and we were going to vacate school, it was going, this is going to go down by May. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we told them that uh, that one was not negotiable, right. because we've already done the way. Mm -hmm. So they should tell us when exactly they are going to pay uh, those funds for that uh, particular year. Then we can go ahead and negotiate. We also told them that we already have a proposal that was sent to the uh, fair with this commission as far back as 2012. Mm. So when negotiations are open, we will also bring a proposal as well. It's not the only one proposal that we're going to look at. Right. But they were adamant, claiming that once they go to the uh, parliament to announce that it's going to be very difficult for them to change here and there. Mm. Uh, so which means that they were not going to pay the book and research allowance. So the negotiations that the Labour Commission asked us to go and back home didn't uh, come off. So we went back and reported to the Labour Commission about that. Mm -hmm. And they further directed that we should go for, uh, initially they said we should go for mediation. Right. We accepted that, we responded to uh, that directive. Mm. However, about three weeks into that, we received uh, a letter from the Labour Commission and the government is rather asking for voluntary arbitration. Right. Which is another form of uh, dispute resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also responded to that in about two weeks now that we sent a letter to the Labour Commission. Uh, we need to hear from them as to when uh, the actual process should be set into motion for us to go and uh, arbitrate on the issue as to whether the 2013 2014 book and the research allowances are due as a government has to pay. Mm. Then uh, all of a sudden, we heard that uh, the Deputy Minister of Education said to the say that the government doesn't owe us anything and that the book and research allowances are usually paid in September. Mm -hmm. And we are yet in September, so he doesn't understand why Putag is on strike. Okay. And uh, we felt that that was an attempt to throw that into the eyes of the public. Mm -hmm. The first place, it isn't true that the book and research allowances are paid in September. Right. Uh, when it was instituted, the idea was supposed to have been paid in the beginning of the academic year. However, uh, as years went by, it went into the middle of the academic year. That was after the first semester. So the beginning of the second semester, it was paid. But over the years, due to government intransigence, low pace, and uh, acting food bagging and rest, every year, the month in which we were paid kept on moving forward. Two years ago, it was paid around June. Mm. Uh, well, we didn't complain because we felt that June was just after the end of the academic year. Right. Now, come last year, 2013, when around uh, April we are uh, waiting to them reminding them of the payment of the book and research mm -hmm. you didn't acknowledge uh, their letter. Right. Uh, June passed, they are not paid, July. So entering uh, August, uh, August to September, we are back on a strike before it was paid at the end of September. Okay. So if for once, you were not in like your actions so that we're not going to pay and you had to go on strike before you pay. Then for you to come and say that that is the usual time that you normally pay. It's not the truth because it's of all the period since nineteen ninety six where we started paying a book and research allowance. It was only last year mm. that due to their own intransigence and uh, feed dragging it was paid in the beginning. 
Now, but, Doug, uh, from yeah. what you have chronicled so far, it does appear to perhaps uh, anybody who will be listening that you haven't gone for your final um, sit-down with the minister yet. What you're saying is that uh, you have had comments uh, pertaining to what uh, yeah, Kotag sure. is going on about uh, now. So wouldn't it yeah. just be prudent then to wait for them to sit with you rather than declare a strike when you haven't gone for no, your no, final... No, we strike. Okay. If you listen to us, they all will read our thing. Mm -hmm. We have not declared a strike. Okay, you, we the, are just the intention, okay. Come the beginning of, uh, if they say they are going to first place, mm -hmm. we said that if they claim that in September that uh, they're going to pick, then okay. we are reminding them in September we are not taking uh, for one academic year, we are taking for two academic years because the next academic year is beginning in August. Mm. So we we'll have to go back to the original plan that plan. we pay at the beginning of the academic year. Okay, before you go and then, then, what do you yes. say to those who say that um, you have uh, a research library in, in most yes. of the universities, and I can speak for University of Ghana, you have the Baum uh -huh. Library, which has a lot of yes. research material. And so therefore, uh -huh. whatever research that you need, it's already in the library, and you wouldn't need to go uh, far I, I, I to get that. I doubt whether those people have the Baum Library to see the, the kind of books that they have, okay. and the most current book mm. that is there. You, you, you use uh, uh, books at the Baum Library anywhere, they will tell you that your material is outdated. Mm. Uh -huh. So that's that's not the issue. And in that case, we have said that if they will provide us with all those materials, we are ready to work. To work, okay. Because the issue, why they started paying the book and research allowance, that they saw that it was going to be uh, difficult mm. for them to provide us with the material. That's why it's okay. The individuals will get those materials and then we will reimburse them. Because when you come to the university, we have people from with different uh, kind of... Uh, Scenario area, area. specialization. Okay. It's all like the uh, pre tertiary education where we have started mathematics and the rest. You okay. come to university, mathematics, we have different areas and different people are specialization. Mm. So if you say that you are going to provide materials for them, it's going to be very cumbersome. Okay. So that is why they give it to the people themselves to provide, uh, to acquire those materials that will be relevant to their work. Thank you very much but for educating us yeah. on that because I'm really running out of time. So what you're saying oh, now right. is that yeah. uh, by September, if you don't get what is due you, this is an ultimatum, you will go on strike. That's what you're yeah, trying to say. Yeah, we basically. won't begin the next academic year. Dr. Samuel Foriba Queen, thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have so many comments that are trending on social media right now, but we've also been on the streets of Accra and we have been asking you if you think that they actually have a point, if uh, what he's saying is that they have given government an ultimatum, that if government is saying we will pay you by September, don't pay us what you owe us then and what you owe us now. Let's take our first video blog. For, for some time now, you see guitar go on strike and they are not listened to. So these people supporting them to go on strike for government to they having a larger voice and for government to listen to them I see it to be very very important they joining them. Well, I don't think that I don't think things should be done that way. You 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 can't just join the other uh, association to back for a demand when uh, you are not actually. Yeah, I mean strike strike actions are good tools to negotiate, right? But for uh, uh, UTAC to join POTAC. For, no, I don't think they have everything. It's only a solidarity support they are giving to the POTAC members. So they are all teachers. So I think they are, it's okay joining them. Um, currently, I learned some um, SS, senior high um, headmasters, are saying that the government, uh, the government is owing them some money for the construction of some schools and the government is not paying them. So for them to put the government on its toes, I think they have to go on strike so that the government will see that they are serious of what they are talking about. Because as of, as of now, the, out of those money the government is paying, it's been deducted from the students' fees. When the government refuses to pay, it means they are, we need to add those money to the students' fees so that the parents will carry that burden. So I think going on strike, strike is very important and it's a point that they need to embark on. Yeah, strikes there and strikes everywhere. Is this the best way to resolve issues with your employer? We'll take our next video blog when we come. I'll take some comments that are trending on social media.
Not really, but uh, if the officials involved are not doing their part, then uh, they don't have an option than to go the strike way. Sometimes they are very important because, you know, strike actions, according to, according to the Constitution, they, they, they are needed. As to we know that we are a democratic country and then we are using the constitution. Though the constitution permits strike actions, as in uh, presenting your petitions to the government. I believe it's not the best, but um, when people, when negotiation should be the best way to solve such problem. But when certain things are not, when these people they go to the table to negotiate and they are not listened to. And I think the last option should be a strike, yeah. Not at all, not at all. That's not the best way to resolve issue. Strike action should not be the best way to do it. Imagine your father or your mother is sick, okay? And a doctor somewhere is going on a strike. You understand? You have your last paper to take it in the examination to complete your school. And then a lecture of yours is holding you uh, uh, your, 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 your final exam in ransom because of strike action. That's not the best. I don't think that's the best. Well, that's what you all think. Let's take some comments that are trending on social media, especially on Facebook. And the precursor has already been said that uh, UTAG is uh, thinking of joining POTAG on uh, strike against uh, for their allowances. Comments have come into you. Have, do, do, do you think they have a point? Uh, strikes the best way to resolve issues with employers. And how can we move away from this? Uh, we begin with uh, Mbo. Mbo says, Mariam, I hope for this country keeps on dwindling. How can we as a country continue to play games with education? If we have the luxury of airlifting three million US dollars to Brazil, why can't we do the same uh, for our lecturers? Marian, do our leaders think? God bless Ghana. Uh, Kwame says, hey, you were uh, tired. Uh, you, hey, you, we tired for the Mamate Sef. Okay. Um, like I kept saying here, this is um, a show that goes international. And so could you try your best to write in longhand and in proper English so that we portray the youth and the people who are within this interactive community as, uh, you know, um, I, I don't know what word to use for you to understand, but you know where I'm coming from. I don't want to say ill-educated or well-educated or however, but you get where I'm coming from. Let's portray that uh, we are able to really write properly so that we don't have me aiming when I'm on, on here. Bruce Snail says, why will government sit over this? If government is not responding, it simply means the cash is not available and they should rather have Ghanaians at heart and do what is expected of them whilst negotiations are also ongoing. Either than that, the country will uh, completely go off. Um, Taki says, strike is the only language the government really, really understands. And I'll take another one before we go to our next issue. This one says, UTAG is right, and they should join POTAG to demand for what is due them because the Mahama government has become so deaf to the extent that they don't listen to anybody but only their family and friends. Thumbs up, POTAG and UTAG. And so now... Uh, to our next issue, we are moving uh, away from Ghana. And let's talk about the World Cup currently going on in Brazil. The coast is now clear, and we now know which countries will be fighting for gold, silver, bronze, and nothing. Last night, Argentina beat the Netherlands four goals to two on penalties after a pulsating goalless draw after extra time to book a place against Germany in the final of Brazil 2014. That gives us a repeat of the 1986 and 1990 World Cup finals. This also means host nation Brazil will play the Netherlands in the third and fourth place matches. So we ask again, uh, were you surprised at the results of yesterday's game? Let's take our video blog. Yeah, I was very surprised. It was a very shocking thing. We were thinking that the Hulan will, will take it, but it's unfortunate that the Hulan couldn't make it. But all the same, it's a very shocking thing. It's a very shocking thing. I wasn't that much surprised because I thought as much that Argentina will overpower, will overpower Hulan, so there's no big deal about the results. Four three is a normal score. Actually, I wasn't surprised because I knew Argentina was going to win yesterday's game. And I was telling people, but they were just making fun of it. They were like Holland, Holland all the way because they, they were able to march out the defending champions. So they were all like Holland all the way and I wasn't surprised at all. No, I'm not surprised because when you look at Holland and Argentina, I think they are all very, very strong team.